very hello hi um, we are starting the live stream on our page and but we will start also the conversation between us and first of all let me thank you to accept our invitation to participate in this meeting it's a friendly meeting with you with you and uh, you both come from germany from poland sorry. and uh, we have also alessia from left and stefano Galliani that is uh, also we need a meeting as transfer from italy uh, we decide to have this meeting uh, some uh, days ago uh, when when the situation between the, uh, the the constitutional court of poland and the ue was on on the agenda on the table the discussion uh, how uh, europe touched the, the the national identity and the national uh, democracy also it's one of the of, of the issue that we want to address in this meeting. But then suddenly, Poland offer us also the opportunity to talk not only of the Poland situation, of course, that is important, and that we would like to know much better than one we have now. But at the same time, to talk about what kind of relation Europe or the European Union uh, has with the with the national identity, with national constitution, but also with uh, national economies or national uh, migrant policies, and what we see uh, it's uh, that it's not only uh, a national question, you know, how to deal with migrants, how to deal with uh, uh, democracy, how to deal with the uh, economical or COVID situation. So uh, we want to also to offer the opportunity to talk about what kind of Europe at, at the end we will are building or we are be, be in front of us. So this is the, uh, the opportunity to have you and to uh, present also the capacity as a media alliance uh, that is a network of uh, journalism uh, coming from different area of the of the continent uh, offer the opportunity to have also uh, a sharing of point of view that it's quite important for us and also to, to build uh, as we as we say a, a European leftist point of view not only state by state but uh, situation by situation but uh, create a sort of European point left point of view on things that maybe are different in each country, but at the end, uh, we, can, we can have a point, a, a, a common uh, situation and a common solution for the problem that we have in different countries. So that's why I leave the floor now right away to Alessia that will, uh, offer you some question and uh, in, interact interact with you uh, for the for the meeting so alessia the floor is yours thank you roberto uh, as you already said i'm here today uh, in the double vest uh, of uh, um, 
Media Alliance project manager and contributor of Left Magazine. So thank you very much. Uh, this uh, represents me very well. <laughs> and uh, today, uh, event focuses on Poland, but we must not forget what happens in Italy, uh, our, our country. Uh, something that uh, as Media Alliance and Left Magazine, we hope to always tell the best uh, we can. Uh, the current situation in Italy is very dark in many ways. We are beyond, behind the rights of uh, LGBTQ plus people uh, with the ZAN law that was blocked uh, one step away from implementation and uh, for uh, being held in place. And uh, we are behind with the right of access to abortion with the uh, entire Italian regions that uh, risk to remain without the uh, gynecologists that are not uh, conscientious object objectors that don't refuse to uh, do abortion on women. And um, not to mention the fact that uh, those born in Italy um, to foreign parents, migrant parents, um, have not cheap. We are very, very behind of that. And uh, what we must hope uh, is that uh, an uh, increasingly fruitful uh, relationship with the European institution uh, that uh, goes uh, beyond uh, the debates on constitutional issues uh, that we will talk about today, and uh, which uh, Professor Fiammetta Salmoni wrote uh, on uh, Left Magazine. And we, as uh, Roberto already said, must uh, um, uh, build something uh, as a European uh, public opinion that maybe uh, can move the institutions and go uh, ahead of these uh, issues that we are talking about. Now, um, I leave the floor to Margosata Kublaszewska, uh, the director of Strike EU magazine that uh, will uh, introduce us uh, the Poland situation. Thank you, Margosata. Thank you, Alessia, for the invitation. Thank you, everybody, for uh, making this roundtable on Poland. And so what you said about the necessity of building a leftist European opinion and not only uh, left-wing forces in every separate country, uh, that's particular weight now after what you said about the right to abortion in Italy and uh, mi migrant situation in Italy. It happens that Poland is facing basically the same problems and basically we went a few steps uh, further in the extreme right-wing direction. What you said about uh, uh, doctors refusing to perform abortions on the grounds of conscience was a problem in Poland a few years ago already. Right now, the whole Pol Pol Polish citizens are basic, were basically deprived of the right to abortion because, well, all the Poland is one big field of the, uh, the objections of conscience. It was the, the extreme right wingers made abortion uh, prohibited in most of cases. And this, uh, this week, Polish women faced uh, even more horrific perspective that abortion will be equalized with murder and that performing an abortion would be punishable with five up to 25 years of imprisonment or even life imprisonment in, um, I don't know what you meant by this, by in the most extreme cases. Basically, this would turn Poland into a salvador of Europe we know the women in Salvador were actually are imprisoned for performing abortion or even for a miscarriage that is considered also a form of abortion. Uh, luckily for us, uh, female citizens of Poland, uh, this bill was rejected yesterday by the parliament. And this time the right-wing government claimed that it could not support it because it was an extreme proposal and uh, it would not contribute to, uh, as they put it, protection of life. Well, whatever they say, it is a reason still to be happy that uh, the bill was not accepted, but we Polish women are still in fear for our rights, for we know that this stopped at this moment because they were afraid of social unrest, they were afraid that they would lose, lose voters, uh, but still this idea of protection of life at any cost, which means protection of a fetus because women's life is worth nothing, as we see. Um, this idea is still on and it will be sooner or later brought again to the parliament. Here we don't have any doubt. Well, uh, and so uh, here I would like to um, uh, 
uh, referred to what Roberto said at the beginning about the, about the European Union, national questions and European Union and defending human rights. A lot of Polish women are now asking themselves a question, why, did, why didn't European Union intervene more decisively once Poland um, and abortion last year, why the European Union's reactions did not go beyond proclamations, beyond declarations of the European Parliament, and the words of support, but only what I say, as I say, only words of support directed to Polish women. And here we, I think we must ask ourselves a question, to what extent European Union actually is ready to defend human rights that are on the very basis of the for of its formation. I think that in the case of Polish women's rights, European Union did not pass the test of solidarity because really we need we Polish women need much more than only words of solidarity. Solidarity is something that we can offer to each other because I'd like to say that uh, right now uh, after the contra the contra revol, counter revolutionary offensive against the Polish women's rights. There was never such a high degree of solidarity between women. It is now easier than at any time to find out how to perform an abortion at home. It is now easier than at any time in Poland to find women who are going to support you, who will help you to go to Czech Republic or Germany if you need to, or who will get you. Uh, the pills need uh, ready for uh, medical for medical abortion uh, at home. But as we know, it is not it is not uh, it is not efficient. It is, does not save women. It does not guarantee us that if the pregnancy gets really bad, we will not be in a hospital like a thirty-year-old citizen of Poland died uh, not long ago. And so the, the question of human rights and European Union is also uh, visible in the second thing that the second problem that is now uh, on the top of in, on Polish public opinion, that is the issue of migration. For uh, not basically a few years ago, a few days ago, excuse me, the European Commission basically agreed to the politics of pushbacks uh, pushed by the by Polish government by formulating the new uh, suggestions how to help Lithuania, Latvia and Poland in the crisis and agreeing that the migrants would be forced to send the asylum applications only in chosen points on the borders, they basically gave the green light to Polish government to push back those who are well not happy enough to reach the checkpoint. And uh, here also we need we need a profound debate on how migration, how European migration policy looks like, and is it isn't it not already taking the direction shown by the Polish government? It is non-humanitarian, that is inhuman. I would even say that directly leads to migrants' death now in the forests of Belarus and Poland, but. We also know about uh, the migrants dying in the La Manche and earlier in the Mediterranean. So here I'd like to say once again, I would stress the need to build leftist European left wing of the leftist public opinion in the whole Europe. It's not that we the Poles have a problem with border or with migration. It's a universal problem which reappears here and there. And it is not that only Polish women have now were now deprived of their basic rights. The extreme right is marching through the whole continent, and we must unite our forces to stop it. Thank you, Malgorzata. And uh, I find very dreadful the part about the natural miscarriage in the law of the portion, because uh, you can do anything about it. So why you have to be persecuted by the law? And also, uh, we can find. Um, for left, I wrote uh, often about uh, women's rights and women's issues, uh, gender issues, and uh, I found that anti-abortion laws uh, not guarantee uh, in the practice uh, less abortion, but uh, less security for women health. So I found very, very <laughs> worrying uh, the, the Poland situation and the direction of the laws in Poland. So I don't know if you agree with me, but I think so. 
Yes, it is true that uh, anti-abortion laws never eliminated abortion. We know that from Irish example, we know that from Latin America, we also know that from Poland, where uh, we had even periodically a scandal when we, when the public opinion found out the right-wing politicians actually procured abortion for his lover, for his daughter, for his sister, whatever. So we could see with our own eyes that actually this is not an instrument to control abortions because we can't do that. It is an instrument to humiliate women straightforward like this. This is an instrument to show women where are their place and what are they supposed to do to be valuable members of the, of the society. And uh, here I would like to say about one more thing that happened in Polish parliament just one day ago. Um, we rejected them, so the parliament rejected the uh, stop abortion bill, but at the same time it uh, keeps working on uh, setting up the Institute of Demographics and Family. And this institute is supposed to be a state institution uh, which would control Polish families, which would be able to intervene in individual families case, and which would be also able to give, I don't know, suggestions to the government what to do to make Polish women to have more children. So we all are in fear that it would be again an institution that conserves a patriarchal family, that, con uh, that confines women at home with children, and that basically does not do anything to fight the viol interfamily violence that is still a problem in Poland. So instead of instead of supporting women, instead of empowering women, we the Polish right is doing everything to put women under control and to well, reduce them to, well, I don't know, machines to uh, pro procreative machines. It's, it, it, this happened. Yeah, thank you. I agree perfectly with you. And uh, we continue to talk about women with uh, Wojciech Lobojinski, uh, a journalist of yours, of Stray EU. And uh, Wojciech, you wrote uh, two articles for Left Magazine. The title translated in Italian. I read it. They are very interesting, and uh, also Malgojata are in the way. Little spoiler. And um, Wojciech, you wrote about uh, the All Poland Women's Strike uh, that uh, talks about uh, the the women's want to be not silent uh, in this uh, situation. And uh, you can tell us what uh, is this moment and uh, which are its vulnerabilities. Okay, th thank you for having me here. Uh, I would uh, like to answer your questions. <clears throat> so the, the whole movement started uh, five years ago when the, the, the conflict about abortion uh, started at the beginning of law and justice uh, rule in Poland. But now I think we, we have to speak about, we have to refer to the movement that emerged one year ago because one year ago protests changed everything uh, in the perception of the, the women's rights in Poland. So the movement one year ago was just a popular uprising, I would say, that was uh, led by the all women strike. And uh, the debate that the, uh, the peace petition to constitutional court is, is running and that, the, that there is going to be a ruling was uh, was also known was already known uh, in the summer of 2020 but uh, demonstrations occurred only after after the the ruling that said that uh, our previous um, previous law is unconstitutional so then uh, all women's uh, strike in Poland that was born three years ago uh, started to let all demonstrations so after two weeks of, of demonstrations that were mainly, at the beginning, were mainly demonstrations of youth, of people of my age, so students, uh, high school students, and, uh, and so on. Uh, after this, uh, all women's Polish strike decided to create something like, uh, like a program committee 
that was uh, made from people from all around uh, anti anti law and justice organizations. So I would say liberal organizations that focus on fighting for uh, rule of law in Poland and etc. So we know this uh, this discourse of uh, of dying democracy in Poland. So I would say the leadership of the of the organization just uh, took took the existed already existing narrative to to run the, the protest uh, i would say the most uh, vulnerable uh, thing about whole movement was that uh, there was no previous debate before the ruling so we knew that the constitutional tribunal was working about a new ruling and everyone uh, was was thinking, yeah, they might do it. They might say that this uh, this law of ours is unconstitutional, but there was no strategy, you know, tactic debate about what are we going to do if they are going to say that this is unconstitutional. So when when the ruling occurred, everyone was uh, was just anger, angry. The the the, the demonstrations were were much. Uh, much more about emotional feelings, about uh, pandemics, about whole depression in Poland due to COVID-19, and also about the ruling. But there were still no debate about tactics, about strategy. So then the, the movement uh, took this existing discourse about dying democracy in Poland. They created this uh, committee. And then uh, after after seeing that this is this is not working because uh, I would say um, people didn't want this committee to be to be created. There, there was no feeling that yeah now we, we have to create some program. No, they wanted an organization that is going to to lead the the popular uprising in uh, in minor cities because the the most um, the the major thing about the women's strike in 2020 was that even uh, every minor city in Poland that wasn't uh, politicized before, so there were no demonstrations in the history of modern Poland, in these cities the demonstrations occurred as well. So there, there was a, a need, I, I would say, of organizing the demonstrations daily, like week after week, and then creating debates on, on the grassroots level and this was something new because in Poland I, I would say since Solidarność anti-communist movement there was no grassroots uh, movement like, like this and uh, political culture of Poland uh, lacks the knowledge of how to how to continue uh, the struggle on, on such level so uh, after after creating this committee then the leadership decided to create some strange, I would say, extremist alliances with uh, with anti-COVID uh, businessmen who wanted uh, justice after 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 this whole um, lockdown of hours that, of course, uh, hit their businesses. Then there were some alliances also with uh, with anti-vaccine organizations like. All, all of these organizations were uh, were happily uh, received on, on demonstrations organized by a all women's strike. So the fuel was running away. I would say that, that these alliances uh, shown uh, everyone that uh, that the organization doesn't have a, a clue uh, what what it is doing. And then, after the ruling was uh, appointed by uh, by the same. So in Poland, if there is a ruling of constitutional tribunal, then it has to be also ruled by by the institution of Polish parliament that it is uh, that it is already in power. So when uh, when the parliament uh, did it uh, at the beginning of 2021, the whole movement collapsed. I would say. So. Uh, the, the, I, I would say that the, the seed of the failure was was already there in 2020 when there was no organization that uh, or institutions at the grassroots level. People were not provided any instruments for the for the upcoming fight, and uh, and that was the main problem. 
because what are we doing? Uh, what are we going to do if the the parliament would say that this ruling is in uh, is already in power? We have to create a debate. We have to convince other people from the the, the, the electorate of the law and justice, the people that uh, that think that the compromise or uh, any anti women uh, laws are okay. But we have to convince them. We have to create a space to to debate with them. And I would say that this would be uh, the mostly the, the thing that that was mostly feared by the government. So when, when the government saw that there is nothing nothing like this, there is just another anti-law and justice rhetoric about dying democracy. They said, okay, we we can we can calm. And we can just wait up this this whole movement, and so they did. Okay, so um, what are nowadays the prospect uh, of the moments for the future? It will collapse. It will endure. Uh, I personally, I don't know. Like the the there are talks uh, around the the organization that we need some uh, new formula because uh, Malta Lampard the the leader of the of the all women strike she i would say she, she made a, a a mistake making an alliance with donald tusk because um, also as liberal media says uh this alliance didn't work well for her like donald tusk is not feeling that uh, after after uh, demonstrations like one month ago uh, Please, Margaret, correct me if I'm wrong. There was demonstrations against uh, uh, against this EU Poland crisis uh, when it comes to rule of law, and uh, uh, the, organ the 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 main demonstration in Warsaw was was held by Donald Tusk and Malta Lampard uh, together. And Martha Lampard uh, said uh, at the end that we have to go all together now at the Novogradska when there is a headquarters, uh, headquarters of law and justice party, but Donald Tusk didn't approve it. And the politicians of civic platform, neither. So I would say some of people say, say that, uh, says that we, we need a new formula, but I don't see this new formula coming. I think it, it might be another uh, liberal um, pro-democratic organization, but no, but it's not going to be another feminist organization. Like I would say people are very tired of this situation. They know uh, what was wrong, but they don't have any, any idea what, what, what we can do now about it. So I would say everyone is waiting for the God, oh, you know, and the godo is not coming. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you also write an article about uh, the relationship between uh, Polish constitution and the European uh, treaties. And uh, what is the current situation from this point of view that is uh, complicated as well? I, I would say that the, the situation is, uh, is very complicated, uh, especially in the perspective in which we also um, refer to the border conflict on the um, Polish-Belarusian uh, border, because uh, at one moment, all European Union support, uh, supports uh, Polish approach to this, uh, to, this, uh, to this conflict, but at the same moment, they are not approving the, the, the situation of uh, rule of law in Poland. And the rhetoric of the of the law and justice party, especially of the uh, minor mm, minor, I would say, satellite party called um, uh, Solidar Solidarity Poland. Uh, I don't know their name in English. It's it's different than than in Polish, and I I can't recall it right now. But this party, they they are saying that there is um, mm, that Polish sovereignty is in danger. As well from the from the part of Belarus, but as well from the part of Germany. And yesterday, this rhetoric uh, was acclaimed also by Jarosław Kaczyński in his speech. And he, he said that uh, Germany is creating, uh, is developing the Fourth Reich. So 
they they've created the third Reich and now they are want to they want to create another but the fourth Reich. Uh, Reich. So I, I would say that this this whole um, this whole debate around uh, around the rule of law is is just um, just a conflict that projects uh, the power of of each of each uh, narration. It's it's not a um, it's not a conflict with an essence right now. It might have an 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 um, law law essence a couple of years ago, but now it's only about uh, discourse and only about what what is European Union about. So if it's going to be a European Union of uh, of uh, different fatherlands with different uh, sovereignty, not a one common sovereignty of European Union, of it it is going to be a federalized. Uh, subject so this is all about right now and uh, <clears throat> i think a polish government uh, is taking uh, this approach of uh, far right uh, far right minor parties that is saying that polish sovereignty is in danger as well from the from the eastern side and western side of of polish border thank you wojciech and also thank you malgorzata in behalf of uh, both the Left Magazine and Media Alliance, because uh, you are the first one to make work our <laughs> our collaboration between countries in uh, Europe. So thank you very much. And we hope that we can expand our collaborations all over the Europe and uh, our uh, our, net of, our network of magazines all around Europe. And uh, before I come back to Malgojata, I want to give the floor to Stefano Galliani, uh, our, <laughs> our mate <laughs> from Transform Italy, and uh, he's the expert of the migrant teams, so <laughs> we, will, we will talk about it with him. And uh, so Stefano, we talk a lot nowadays about the crisis at the Belarusian border, as we talk uh, also already before today, but how much the situation talks about the, the European one in its role? Stefan, I can hear you. Perfect. Sorry. And thank you, Alessia. And sorry for my English, that's very bad. And totally agree about with the Mamujada about this problem, but um, uh, I think that the, situ the, the, the situation is very, very hard. Today, the international attention is focused, uh, 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 as far as Poland is concerned, only at the Belarusian border. A serious crisis in which a few thousand of people are involved. As far as we know with Italian formation, people often families with children and other vulnerable people who tried uh, several times often in the way to cross the border to the enter in the european union they have a few days to do it within the year a barbed wire world will be ready 100 uh, eight, uh, eight um, kilometers long costing uh, three um, costing three hundred 53 million euros, which should constitute a further obstacle to any possibility of movement considered irregular. In fact, today is a, a partly a metaphor for fortress for Europe. The wall uh, uh, they wanted to build is one of many uh, of the many that are new reason. Some I made at the count is that uh, not part of the European Union, uh, other, others internal. Um, almost 1,800 kilometers, uh, kilometers of buried borders that are not now to stop the, uh, those in Europe seeking salvation, fleeing from the many disasters brought by the new colonialism. Also along with the other, and um, sorry, um, other uh, countries, countries 
11 other countries, mostly Eastern except their, modern Eastern except uh, Denmark and Cyprus, have asked the, uh, the European Union to bear the cost of these bar barriers to save the borders, save the borders. <laughs> uh, the president of the European uh, Commission re reacted uh, by declaring that uh, uh, while understanding the reasons, uh, there will be no European funds, funds for these barriers. The president of the European Council on the very day uh, the, the celebration of the collapse of the Berlin Wall, 9 of November, instead the uh, call of the European to collaborate. The president who leads uh, a body in which uh, all 27 countries are represented, uh, are represented is more affected than of, uh, by pressure from, the, from governments. Many will uh, the world's continue to rise in the Baltic countries and in Balkan countries. And the people continue to be trapped in a continent that has become like a zoo, dividing into cages. Italy, more exposed to the sea borders, tries to stop asylum seekers by other means, often illegals. There are few rescue ships uh, in the central Mediterranean. And those uh, uh, who flee from the ports of Libya, Algeria, or Tunis Tunis Tunisia are, inter are inter intercepted by the, not by rescue uh, ships, but by front explains that report the boats to the authorities of the ports which, from which they left to bring them, uh, them back. Uh, those uh, who, who are returned to Libya a country of, a country of transit, the Arturian, uh, are looking at the open uh, in detention center. A very serious international violation uh, that seems impossible to stop. Recently, the director of the Frontex, the agency for the, rate, the fight against irregular immigration, immigration Fabrice Lagerie, is under investigation for these reject, uh, rejections. The men will continue. About 26,000 people were intercepted and returned to Libya in the first uh, 10 months of 2021. Uh, 54,000 managed to arrive in Italy. At least 1,600 uh, 1, drowned in the absence of rescue. The Mediterranean route has been one of the most dangerous in the world for years. France rejects in Italy every year uh, tens of thousands of people who try to cross uh, the borders in the Alps or Andesia. And over, over uh, there of Dia, uh, also one day, uh, a shipwreck uh, last week in the English Channel. While yeah. trying uh, to reach in the Union, in the United Kingdom. Yeah, Stefano, uh, it's a very dreadful situation that you are talking about. So the question is, uh, uh, what should we expect from the European Union regarding the status of migrants and what is happening now, really? <laughs> a bad, uh, important, but a bad, uh, but question. There are no laws in Europe uh, that allow people to enter regularly without risking their lives. Only restricted humanitarian corridors for very few people. There have been uh, humanitarian, uh, there have been humanitarian emergency, in, uh, emergency such as the uh, Syrian or in the past uh, that of Kosovo, in which for a short time, Europe welcomed people. Then the trends were closed. Uh, were closed, were closed again. Uh, uh, Europe uh, uh, today only and not always part of, of the Afghan refugee can expect to arrive without being, uh, being uh, spelled. But the fear is that soon uh, the street will close for them too. Eminence uh, and, and even uh, on today arrive. For the most, uh, for the most of them, 
Life is difficult between racism, xenophobia, reception system that often don't, do not work, difficulty, uh, difficulties to acclimatization. The plane presented the last year about the European uh, uh, Commission, New Pact on Migration and Asylum, is a text in which the repatriation is privileged, uh, deportation only, is privileged, pri privileged uh, as tool to drive uh, out those uh, who are not considered worthy of life in Europe. Pressure from the 12 countries that want the wall uh, uh, at the expense of the union, uh, the union will, be, will probably make the text an ever more cruel and restrictive. Nationalist propaganda continues. The region and tell about, uh, us about a continent that risks being, uh, being invited, but the invasion do not, do not exist in Poland, in Italy, and the rest of the Europe. In a continent of uh, 430 million uh, inhabitants, there would be room for those who need perhaps, perhaps uh, only temporarily to leave their country. And the European Union could be play an important role in, preve uh, in preventing uh, uh, so many conflicts, often forgotten, uh, from becoming crises without solution but a vision uh, uh, of politicals could be needed in which, uh, uh, sorry, but uh, uh, mm, <laughs> uh, but um, one, only one moment. No problem. <laughs> Man, this is very, very, no. Only when that. Don't worry about it. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I think we understood anyway the hey. <laughs> point, so don't worry. Yeah, of course. No problem, no problem. Maybe. Mm. I'm afraid uh, uh, I have to say that uh, our country and the very, uh, very idea of the U European Union are also destined to explode, not because of those uh, who run away, but because of those uh, who do not want to face the global challenges that always await us. The only hope can uh, come uh, from a commitment and a political choice that only uh, the forces of the left can carry forward, acting in the institution, in the media, and in the public opinion. Sorry, but my English is very, very bad. No, Stefano, thank you very much. We understand all that you want to say. If, if I can add one point on this of migration, I just react on the what someone is reading and writing on the Facebook, mm -hmm. that Europe must have a rule to permit the person coming from outside to find a job, to looking for a job in Europe. And this would be a, a Copernican revolution for, for, for us, but it, it, it was so, uh, in the past, Europe was not made uh, by borders, but by inclusion. So well, what we can promote also, what we want, what we can ask, it's to find uh, the rule that uh, discover the value of Europe as and one of the values is the solidarity. Uh, so I think that this is also something that <clears throat> Can share at European level, not to, to defend or to uh, improve one national uh, uh, opposition to the government, to, to each government, but to find a way that we have a common battle uh, at European level that would be one of the 
the main the major task for for our societies thank yeah, you but, uh, sorry but uh, the many european countries wish uh, not uh, workers not a uh, citizen but only a slave only people that can uh, stay in Italy, in, in Italy or in France or in Poland, uh, if they accept only condition to job, but uh, uh, in uh, any moment they can uh, go go out if mm -hmm. they don't don't uh, don't consider it important, don't consider don't consider uh, necessary. This is the very, very bad situation. If we don't change a uh, labor uh, market, it's impossible to change uh, migration uh, problems. It's not a solidar solidarity problems, it's a political problems that uh, regards uh, not only the migrants, but uh, all the European uh, citizens. Exactly. I Thank you. Agree. <laughs> yeah, of course I am too. And uh, staying on this theme, uh, Malgozata, please, can you tell us something about the uh, situation of the Belarusian border? Something that we mentioned one more time again today, and uh, it's very important yeah. to talk about. Before I go to the Belarusian border, I just wanted to react quickly to your questions that you posed to Wojciech earlier about okay. the perspectives of women's movement. Mm -hmm. I think that my colleague is perfectly right when saying that the perspectives are unsure, that they are very blurred, and that the close alliance with liberal opposition, with the civic platform, uh, turned out to to actually turn out to be the wrong way out of the crisis for the women's movement. Uh, for in fact, they allied themselves with the party that was in power in Poland for eight years and did nothing for women's rights. Let's be honest, they did nothing because they were afraid of the Catholic Church and of the uh, supposed conservative society, which turned out to be as much conservatives as everybody thinks. As Wojtek said, that everybody in Poland was protesting. Even the small towns uh, reputed to uh, be, you know, conservatives uh, for posts. And um, uh, what I think uh, I wanted to say that uh, new, the perspective for the women's movements is a further influx of young women, of the people who are has Wojciech's age, not mine, uh, so people, <laughs> yes, people younger than me, uh, who are, were not born at the beginning of the 90s, who were not raised in the absolute cult of the liberal market, and who uh, are now, and for whom it is natural to mix a demand for a more just society with a demand for more civic liberties. And for we say that for women who are now 18, 20 years old in Poland, it is a natural mix because they face, at the same time, they face the lack of basic women's rights, they face a very uh, negative discourse from the side of the right wing, and at the same time they are entering the labor market and they see that workers too have no rights in Poland. So I think that if this generation gets the lead in the women's movement and if they debate between themselves how to how to uh, strike the government more strongly, they may be the hope for women in Poland. And now you let's go to the border, which is, um, yes, this is a very sad topic. And as I said, uh, the, um, this, uh, just a few years, a few days ago, the state of emergency in the border zone was, is over but the government immediately introduced a new border security law, which is basically the repetition of all the provisions of the state of emergency uh, with yet some more additions. For, so let me just remind you that right now, no journalists and no humanitarian workers can access the border. They can operate only 50 kilometers away from the border. And uh, if uh, somebody needs help in this border zone, he or she can not count on any help apart from the border guards who will push this person back to Belarus. And uh, indeed, uh, some people in uh, 
uh, Belarus on its part is trying to uh, prove to Europe that they are humanitarian and that they actually help refugees, unlike the bad Poland, which is pushing them away. So uh, on uh, the, so a few weeks ago, Belarus built a temporary center, refugee center, not far from the border, and they housed some 2,000 migrants there, so that they are not camping outside in the East European winter. They are not dying from frost, at least. But we know that this center did not house all the migrants, that there are many more of them in Belarus, that they are still stuck there because uh, the Belarusian government suggested the migrants that they still have the chance to be allowed into Europe and that uh, perhaps there will be an agreement between Belarus and Germany so that at least some of them make their way to Germany. And also uh, Alexander Lukashenko during his personal visit to the migrant center declared that the Belarusian border guards are not going to stop them from trying to cross the border. So what is what we see now is that people are being fed with the false hope by the Belarusian side that they still have the chance to get into Europe while Poland and supported by the European Commission is tightening the migrant policy even, str even stronger. Uh, by the end of August, the Polish uh, parliament voted a bill that permits to push the migrant bags. Well, the, for the, of course, the word pushback was not uh, used directly, but, uh, it, um, but the law basically allows the migrant that crossed the border illegally, yes, the, uh, immediately sent back to the uh, to the state where he came from, that is to Belarus, and immediately uh, he or she is introduced in the registry of the unwanted citizens uh, to the so that even if he reappeared on the border crossing, then he would be again well pushed away from Poland. And uh, what is uh, the most tragic dimension of the crisis is perhaps that we are in, now the frost came to the Eastern Poland and more and more people are dying. We know theoretically that 17 people died on the Polish territory on in the, in the immediate vicinity, but a lot of migrants are saying that there are bodies in the woods, that they have to bury their comrades who not go anymore and died of exhaustion, so we'll perhaps never know how many people actually lost their lives. And uh, the tragic thing is also that Polish society keeps being divided on the issue, for there are a lot of great people, a lot of fantastic people uh, working, for example, in the Granit Grupa Granica or the Border Group, uh, who are uh, helping the migrants to survive in the woods. Uh, on the other hand, uh, their actions are supported by some 30%, 30-40% of the society, while the majority uh, seems to be favorable of uh, the government policies. The majority of polls, not a huge majority, but still more than 50%, as it's shown by the polls, is still uh, believes the governmental discourse about dangerous migrants, about aggressive migrants, about, uh, you know, violent people who are coming to Poland, uh, not only to attack our Catholic religion and our traditional values, but also to be of direct threat to our, uh, to our, to us. And uh, what is also, uh, and I would say that Polish government is manipulating the information about violent migrants. For example, uh, as I said, uh, the journalists are not allowed to go to the border zone. So we, the media are supposed to rely on uh, the films and uh, uh, photos that the border guard posts on the internet. And uh, what they post for last few weeks is almost the same. So we see groups of migrants throwing stones to the Polish, uh, Polish zone. And uh, this accompanied by comments like dangerous people coming or very aggressive migrants stopped by Polish soldiers. So the government is still working on the Polish society to be a threat of these people. In fact, uh, even if these guys are, are throwing stones at the Polish border guards, it looks no worse than, for example, riots after football matches. 
some uh, in some uh, cities of Poland. So really, we are seeing most human propaganda, uh, Kane propaganda ever. Particularly that those who can uh, search the internet can easily find videos or images made by mi migrants themselves. Where you can see that there are not only desperate young guys on the border, there are also freezing women, there are children, there are elderly people. So yes, the so and Polish policy keeps being inhuman. And I would also say that Polish politics is extremely ineffective too, because although we the border guards boast to stop everybody who is trying to cross the border, now we get news from Germany that about 10,000 migrants are already there the detention centers in Brandenburg, so the, the border zone with Poland, they somehow made their way. We also get news about migrants being stopped by the police in Western Poland, in Central Poland. So it turns out that those who are perhaps most creative, who have the strongest networks, I don't know, their family in Germany, for example, that can come to Poland and pick them up. So those who turn out to be the strongest and most determined actually do make their way to Germany, while the weakest, though, the families with children who can't march fast, or women who, who go alone to their families in the West, they are left to freeze in the forest. And this is something that the Polish government agrees to. This is tragic, this is absolutely, this is leaving us, you know, hopeless because we would like to help and we can't really do that. Thank you, Magujada. And uh, the most important thing to reflect uh, about is perhaps the fact that uh, it's something that not, is not happening uh, very far away from us. It's happening in Europe. <laughs> so uh, it's something that uh, it's all about us and not about only Poland. And uh, Boychuk raises his end, I think. Okay, but yeah, uh, yeah. just, just oh, I wanted sorry. to say one, yeah. one more thing. I wanted also to say that Polish uh, public opinion tends to forget absolutely that we as Pol uh, the Polish state had its part in destabilizing Iraq, that we participated enthusiastically in the inter American intervention in Iraq. And so we contributed somehow to the fact that Iraqi citizens are now the second biggest group fleeing to Europe because the they are already the first, I think. Yes, they are already the first because the, the Iraqi citizens are most numerous on the borders, followed by the Syrians and by people from different African countries. And really, most of those countries are either ravaged by the war or devastated by natural disasters or both. And this fact is really not, perce not perceived by Polish public opinion nor by the government claims that even Iraq is a safe a safe place to live. African countries are also safe places to live, supposedly. And we are talking about people who are coming from countries like Somalia and Co or Congo, which are definitely one about one of the worst places to live on earth and not safe places. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. So now Wojciech, a quick reaction. Yeah, yeah, I would like just to add that there is also another phenomenon emerging uh, in front of us in Poland, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, to YouTube or other uh, grassroots medias, um, because um, there is this narration that um, the whole conflict, whole crisis at the polish belarusian uh, border is just a proxy battle of Vladimir Putin. And it's, this is a proxy battle um, uh, to, <clears throat> to create some delusion uh, about that this is the, the main topic we have to focus right now. Uh, but at the same time, uh, time uh, Russia is concentrating uh, its forces at the border with Ukraine. So um, the Volodymyr Zelensky and the head of uh, Ukrainian intelligence also add something to this to this narration because they are feeling that that the war is coming to ukraine also the head of uh, cia stated the same thing that that we can we can expect war in the next two months a large scale invasion of ukraine so in poland there is uh, this this um, this discourse is exploited by our government 
a couple of weeks ago uh, mm -hmm. or three weeks ago the bill was signed that uh, that projects that our army should be bigger than it's uh, at the moment it's going to be the army of uh, 3000 regular soldiers then accompanied by by a civil guard and then at the same time there is um, uh, there are two two um, two experts that really capitalize from from this uh, from this uh, crisis one of them is Jacek Bartoszek another one is Robert Zachowicz. now they they published the book um, the third world war is coming this is the title and this book is going to be bestseller. I mean, uh, two days or three days ago, there was an interview with them in a prime time YouTube channel called uh, Sports Canal that was watched uh, by, I, I would say, at this moment, maybe even two million people, maybe one million and a half. Yesterday, it was one million and a half. So it, it was just three, four days ago. So uh, we have to know. Uh, what is uh, what is going on also at the the other side of the barricade? I mean, uh, among the people who are against uh, migration, and I would say that uh, that some uh, some horrible uh, things uh, are going on there. But at the same moment, uh, I wouldn't say that this um, uh, this scenario of large scale invasion uh, the Ukraine is not uh, is impossible. Right. So we have to be conscious about this. Thank you, Wojciech, absolutely. And now, if Stefano would like to say something very quick, or not, I don't know. I think that uh, many, many things are, uh, speak well, very well, like me, the Wojciech um, and Wojciech. Mm, I, I have only a question. Mm, I know that uh, there are uh, 4,000 peop people uh, in, uh, on the borders. 2,000, 4,000, uh, not. Uh, it's possible that uh, for a few people uh, in a, a big country like a Poland, uh, there's this crisis extreme. I think that uh, um, there, are, there is a solution for a few for, pe for, for a few people. The really people is political and uh, is. Um, Allow the is um, uh, linked to the problem with the Belarus, the Belarusian, and uh, with Putin, that uh, pretend to enter in the in the European situation in the European crisis, but the the number of the people are, are not problematic. I think uh, I'm not sure. Want to answer very quickly? Yes, I think that indeed, uh, compared to my, to the dimensions of migration, migrants coming to Italy or Spain or Greece, even uh, what happens on Polish Belarusian border is not in not in not. Would, wouldn't say not insignificant at all, but this is really a small group. And uh, indeed, coming to Belarus by plane still requires a substantial financial uh, financial contributions from the migrant themselves, for they could not fly to Minsk for free. They were supposed to pay 10 up to $15,000. So some of them actually paid, uh, sold everything they had in Iraq or Syria in order to be afford to afford the trip. So not only we have uh, we are dealing with a fairly small group of migrants, but also we are dealing with people uh, who are really desperate to stay in Europe, who know there is no way back because they sold everything they had in their native country, and so they are determined to stay. Germany, where most of them want to go, they are determined to stay in Europe and not get deported for 
some reasons. Those are the people who experience the worst in their home countries and really not candidates for, I don't know, destroying European societies as Polish far right is portraying them. Thank you, Magdalena. Wojciech, you want to add something or are you okay with it? I can hear you. I would say that Magdalena put it perfectly. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. So thank you all. Uh, thank you. I now give the floor to Roberto for uh, the closure of the event. Uh, but uh, many thanks to all of you. It was very, very uh, full of um, food for two. So and thank you again. And now Roberto. Yes, thanks. Thanks to you, Alessio. You were perfect leadership of this meeting and uh, thank you uh, what uh, what i want to say is not the conclusion because we don't need conclusion and uh, just a talk with, between us so let me just thanks again uh, streja uh, bojek and margo jada to be here and stefano and alessia also to participate in this meeting but with with the promises that we we don't leave the floor, we are continuously working together, and we want to enlarge also the the participation and, and create a space like this, where we can talk at a European level. And this is this is the most important uh, things for me, and from transform in. That's why want, we want to have um, at the end of the year would be a next round table with the newspaper from uh, France, Greece, uh, Spain, Poland, of course, with you. Uh, so we will invite you, of course, Italian one, but uh, what we want to invite you to let possible the, the growing of this uh, uh, Media Alliance project. And uh, at the same time, we have on the Poland situation, we also want, I want to make an advertising because also Transform Europe, the, are the network that we are joining, uh, is producing with Nasprod, the Fundacja Nasprod in Poland, uh, materials on Poland, so you can check also in uh, our website, Transform uh, Network, and uh, find some more information on, on the Poland situation. And I thank you again, and I give you the, the appointment for the next meeting, and, the, and we, I will send more information, of course, on this, but I'm sure that we can cooperate again. Uh, and as, as Alessia say, it's a fruit for the mind that we have to create and, and plant. Thanks a lot to you. Thank you. And uh, I just recall for the all the Italian and English speaker that uh, on Strike AU and on left, uh, there are the articles of Magujata, uh, Wojciech, uh, and uh, a lot of other contributions uh, from Media Alliance that are coming. So we hope that uh, the languages of the Media Alliance article will expand, as uh, Roberto said. So thank you. For sure. Hi. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Um, Hi. Ciao. Uh, 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 uh.